Stephen Hawking, Helen Keller, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. What do these people have in common? Well, they're all people who, in spite of their many setbacks, accomplished so many great things. However, I ask you, dear viewer, did they beat Refraction Railway Line 2 with the worst team possible in the hit gotcha game Limbus Company for mobile phones and home computers? No? Then I think we know who's really going down in history. For those who don't know, a few weeks ago I beat Refraction Railway with the worst team possible. But how did I do it? Well, to be honest, this was all going to be one big video talking about everything related to beating Refraction Railway with the worst team possible, but there was simply too much to talk about. So instead, this is part one, where I'll be going over the rules I set for myself for this challenge, my thought process before and during the challenge to an extent, and go in depth about the team I crafted to be as bad as possible, and how this team could potentially get worse. I want to keep this intro short since you might be able to tell, but there really is a lot to say about each of these IDs. I've already talked at length about each of these, so I will be attempting to show you my particular perspective on them through the lens of Railway. So. I hope you're ready to go really in-depth into things that don't really matter to anybody else, because why the hell would you do this? Seriously, do not do this. So before I talk about how I made the team I did, let me talk about why I even did this challenge in the first place. I mean, it seems insane to an outsider. In the past, I have mentioned how I truly believe that every ID, no matter how bad, can be used in Limbus Company, even at the highest level. It may be suboptimal, and oh boy, it absolutely was in this case, but this was meant to be the ultimate test to my claim. In addition, in my apology video, I uptied Chef Gregor and Blade Lineage Otis to uptie 4. Now, come on. Do you really think I did that because I was sorry, or had remorse for my actions? I'm a YouTuber, I have no soul, everything is about the content. So yeah, I had this plan for a while. And as such, my team already had five of its members solidified by my Worst IDs video. Those were Sloshing Ishmael, Mariachi Sinclair, Blade Lineage Otis, Zvi Rodian, and Chef Gregor. In my opinion at that time, these were the bottom five IDs in the game, with Chef Gregor only being here because I could not double up on Sinclair IDs, and thank god I couldn't. Zvi Sinclair and Mariachi on one team would have been terrible. You'll see why later, though I mean, it should be obvious why that would be terrible. The question then remained of who else I should bring on this team of trashy all-stars. This was honestly a tricky question, since I didn't want to dip into the pool of base IDs if I could help it, but all the other two stars were way too good for this challenge. There were only two IDs I considered. Those were Liu Honglu and Seven Yi Sang. Liu Honglu was only considered for a little bit, but because he simply would have been way too good with the burn boost from Railway, and he has an 11 rolling skill 1 without any negative offense level, he was deemed too good. Yes, a neutral offense level 11 rolling skill 1 was too good for this team. Seven Yi Sang was also far too good for this challenge for a myriad of reasons which we will get into, so I had to take my choice of two base IDs. And when it comes to base IDs, Base Faust was an easy, immediate pick. There's a reason most people don't use Base Faust ever again after the tutorial, or maybe they use her for a few fights when they have no idea how the game works, but trust me, she sucks. So now, with six members, there was a strong debate for who would be the unlucky seventh sinner on my team. Remember, we have a Rodian, Ishmael, Sinclair, Faust, Gregor, and an Otis. Doubling up on sinners is not possible, so the only two really bad options left were Base Merceau and Base Yi Sang. This was a hard choice, at least initially, for a few reasons. Let's look at what they bring to the table. Here are Base Yi Sang's stats compared to Base Merceau's. These two IDs are almost complete opposites of each other. Base Yi Sang has high speed, a middling health pool, and pretty bad clashing, but a neutral offense level. Again, yes, a neutral offense level is good in the context of this run. Base Merceau has the worst speed range possible in the game, great health, and decent clashing on the skill 2, as well as a 4 coin skill 3, but a minus 3 offense level, meaning he always loses 1 clash power compared to an ID with plus 0 offense level. It's at this point I want to talk about something that was a core reason this run was as difficult as it was. 
Ego is really important for almost any challenge run. I did not limit myself to only base Ego, so I had all the options available that my six sinners could equip. However, here is the sin spread for the six team members that were locked in. You'll notice a distinct problem. Only three and the resource generation. What's worse, two of that was on Mariachi Sinclair's skill 2, which was bound to be replaced by his evade at some points. Fluid Sack requires Envy, Gloom, and Lust. Lust and Gloom were covered well enough, but Envy was not. Basey Sang would have alleviated the Envy generation problem and fixed another crucial problem. Let's look at all the speed ranges of my entire team. Chef Brigger and Sloshmill are the only IDs whose average speed is above 3. Yi Sang's base ego, Crow's Eye View, would have done way too many things right. It would have given a very useful 2 attack power down and 3 haste next turn. Since base Yi Sang is almost guaranteed to be the fastest team member, the 2 attack power down would have been abused to all hell. And since sloth and wrath generation of this team is not lacking at all, I could use it as much as I wished. Funny as it is to say, base Yi Sang would have been insanely useful for this challenge. And in fact, he would have fixed several core issues. So of course I took base Marcel, who has his own benefits of course, but remember the main focus of this run was to bring the worst IDs possible. Ego was pretty much fair game, and I include Sin Spread in the worst IDs, so base he sang was just not an option. When I realized this was genuinely the team I had to take through Railway and it's 29 fights, I actually considered just not doing it. However, some horrifically masochistic side of me pushed on, and there was no turning back once I uptied almost all of these IDs to max. And of course, since this was about making this run almost as arbitrarily difficult as possible, I set up some rules. Rule 1. I could only use these 7 IDs in battle. If they happened to die, that was okay, but generally losing one ID meant the run was dead, or so much harder to the point of not being able to continue. It should go without saying that even having a single competent ID on this team would have changed the whole thing. In addition, I must have the worst support passives possible on my other 5 slots. Rule 2. I could not intentionally farm for sin resources. It's boring to just get to T-Core and spam guard. Sorry, but it's true. To be honest though, this rule barely mattered. Simply due to the length of these fights, You'll see the true extent of how long, turns or minutes wise, these fights could go on for, but because of how long the fights are, you would almost think that I had been intentionally resource farming. And rule 3. I had to get to 5 cycles. There was no cheaping out on this run. No doing one fight then fighting Sign of Roses. This was going to be a full, earnest, refraction railway run. Only 3 seemingly simple rules. But what really was going to make this challenge brutal was of course, these IDs. Now I just want to disclaim beforehand, and I do not want this to come off as preachy, but my brain has literally been altered by this challenge. I look at a lot of IDs differently now and see strengths I didn't, simply due to how brutal this challenge was. So with that in mind, I'll be talking about my team of IDs I used within the context of Railway and discuss the concerns I had before, and some of the troubles they had in general. Again, I won't be going into detail for each fight, since that's what the next video is for. Let's start with the most infamous of these bad IDs, at least on this channel, Sloshing Ishmael. Now, needless to say, my opinion on Sloshing Ishmael going into this challenge was negative. So negative, in fact, this was the only ID I did not bother to get for myself and up tie to 4, so instead I used the support function. But, let me swallow my pride as well as my hatred for this ID, and say that in the context of Railway, Slosh Mill certainly did have her upsides. First of all, the skill 3 clashing is good, and her speed range as I mentioned before is weirdly fine, I have no idea why she is average speed range when the enemy she's based off is as slow as all hell. That aside, everything else about her kit in particular was awful for this challenge. But before that, here are the stats Sloshing Ishmael had at the end of this challenge. Now I know what you're thinking. Whoa, she absorbed a ton of damage, holy base, I love Sloshmill. Please. I know some of you are absolutely diehard Ishmael fans, 
but just hear me out. Every skill of Slosh Mills has aggro, so she's often taking multiple attacks. Seems good, right? She's a tank after all, and she can have extra health from her passive. In the average team, yes. Here, this was a nightmare. Again, speed was a massive problem. Probably my most consistently problematic factor in the whole run. If Sloshing Ishmael had four attacks targeting her and the enemy rolled a four on speed, which was more likely with the accelerating boost, I couldn't redirect them. This led to several resets, since she would oftentimes just flat out die. But Esku, what about her passive? She gains extra shield HP. <sighs> no. Every member of this team needed to be proactive. Spamming guard on Slosh Mill meant a much extended fight, and likely she would still die. She had to be a constantly clashing and dealing damage member of the team. She had to be a functional ID and not just a do-nothing tank. So while this might have been taking her out of her element, and you may call it unfair, a lot of other IDs were on the same boat. But either way, she did soak up damage, but it was more of a pain than you would think just based on the stats. Sloshmill's real grace is being an Ishmael ID and having Snag Harpoon. My team is slow, so 6 bind next turn was immensely useful, especially because it's 2 gloom, 2 wrath, which I generate in spades. As well, I actually used the passive in a meaningful way. Usually this passive is a win harder button, but for me, it provided some much needed consistency to an otherwise inconsistent clasher without her skill 3. I had to spam Snag Harpoon on certain fights, and not just for the bind, but to not have aggro on Slosh Mill so she wouldn't literally explode. Capote and Ardor Blossom Star also got some use, but Ardor Blossom costs Envy. And yes, every bit of Envy mattered. Even using one was risking not having enough by the end of the run for Fluid Sack and Chains of Others. I also want to say, her skill 3 eating Tremor count genuinely mattered sometimes. That's right, Tremor was one of the few status effects I could actually somewhat support. But all hope of actually using it was lost, because I had to use Slosh Mill skill 3 to clash. So, for anyone who says that it barely matters that it reduces Tremor, it absolutely did here. I'll talk about more how my perception of Slosh Mill changed in the second part of this video, but until I had actually started this run, I had no idea that the aggro problem would be this bad, and it was. In terms of IDs that could have been used over Slosh Mill, Base Ishmael comes to mind, right? Many people have suggested that Sloshing Ishmael is practically a direct upgrade to Base Ishmael, so for this challenge, Base Ishmael would have also been worse, right? To that, I can very confidently say, no. Base Ishmael would have been at least two times better for this challenge specifically. She has consistently high speed, better clashing outside of the skill 3, which would have given one blunt fragility and the majority of my damage to blunt, and would have synergized with my tremor setup instead of taking away from it. She would have also provided slightly more gluttony, which was a resource I was a little lower on than I would have liked. The only argument against her is having a wrath skill 1, but well, I'll talk about Rose Sign in the next video. Every other Ishmael ID is obviously better though, and we're not even close to being considered for this run. Is base Ishmael a worse ID than Sloshmill in most cases? Probably yes, but in this case in particular, Sloshmill is definitely a lot worse. Now, Mariachi Sinclair. Before I started the challenge, I knew Mariachi would have two purposes. Being my main envy generator, and evading. His skill 3 was also a good get out of jail free card, with a very high floor. His sinking is also there. If I wanted, I could have taken the sinking buff to lean into this specifically, but it simply would not have been worth it. Now, his evade may seem just alright on the surface, but in Railway 2, the rolls are generally not high enough to outroll this evade, or only become high enough after a few coins roll heads. Meaning Mariachi Sinclair, when targeted, can get away with evading the majority or entirety of otherwise scary attacks. This was far more valuable than a guard since lots of the fights in Railway inflict very bad effects on hits, such as Steam Machine and Centipede with Paralyze next turn, or Drifting Fox and So That No One Will Cry with Rupture. Now, evading didn't always progress the battle much, but it was a small way to save on ego resources and therefore, sanity. Speaking of ego, Mariachi Sinclair definitely brings the least useful ego out of any of my team members. Or, he did. Branch of Knowledge is absolute garbage, losing me 20 SP for free, basically. But, 
It is a high rolling clasher since the 29 was actually pretty solid to beat some scary attacks, but his low speed made it relatively useless. Impending Day was the far more interesting Ego, even though it also didn't see much usage. Even before the run, I was considering using this Ego to kill bosses for the team heal effect, and potentially even trigger the passive by killing enemies with his skill too. Though the problem came with how few things would actually be killed in total over the course of Railway. But there was one fight I'll talk about in part 2 where this was immensely useful. Mariachi's downsides are quite bad. His clashing is the worst on the team, with abysmal numbers, and even worse speed. And his offense level is doing him no favors. There's a reason he was considered the second worst ID by me. One funny thing, since I took Poise Boost, Mariachi's skill 3 was actually incredibly likely to crit, gaining extra damage and lowering stagger threshold. Combine that with a 3 coin skill 2, and his damage was actually alright when he was not an evade bot, which 9 times out of 10, he was. In terms of replacement, Zvi Sinclair over Mariachi is a tricky debate that I didn't realize beforehand. Zvi actually has very slightly better clashing, but he has aggro, which is a bad thing in a way. If Mariachi had aggro, it would actually be kind of good, since he can invade infinitely so long as the attacks are not too high rolling. Spy Sinclair would have been more fodder due to his aggro, but might have been able to clash and provide protection, which, with everyone having low speed, this passive is actually pretty alright. However, Spy might have been even worse simply on principle of not having any envy skills, leaving me with only one envy generating skill on the team overall. This is the only swap that I think would have made the challenge harder, and as such, I will be redoing the entire challenge with him instead. Not, not really. I don't want to go. I don't want to go back. In all seriousness, the choice of Mariachi and Zvi wasn't that tough, simply because a lot of people really hate Mariachi Sinclair, so I wanted to take him along to prove that he can work for Railway. That said about Zvi Sinclair being worse for it when you take away Envy, while it is still true now and you will not be able to fuel Fluid Sack, Sinclair's Lantern Ego was released after I had already completed the Railway, which can be used instead of Fluid Sack for healing. The Sin resources needed for Lantern are covered decently enough, meaning if you do not limit your Ego, this challenge is significantly easier now, since Lantern can be semi-spammed in a way Fluid Sack cannot, and it can heal everyone on the team, unlike my main healing source, which was Pursuance. Blade Lineage Otis. This ID brought mediocrity to the table, I guess. I don't mean that in the worst way, but she simply existed. Her skill 1 would have been great for this challenge if it was actually plus 3 coin power instead of only plus 1. That said, this was the best skill 1 I had, since I was almost always at the poise requirement, which this being my best skill 1 clashing tool is laughable, honestly. I was often replacing her skill 1 with an evade, just like Mariachi. The evade was also made very strong by that poise boost, and Blade Lineage Otis was one of the two reasons I took the poise boost initially. However, even with that, Blade Lineage Otis is just forgettable. She was not the worst on the team, and all of her ego really helped throughout the challenge, and I knew they would be great. To Pathos Mathos is a consistent clasher, with a passive allowing Otis to gain 3 damage up, which made Otis an alright damage dealer. That's right, even with 30% more damage, BL Otis just did alright. The funny thing about BL Otis and the Poise Boost is that she first needed to win a Clash with a skill 2 to actually be able to get Poise going, and a 13 Clasher is alright enough in Railway sometimes, but not having enough Poise for her evade bonus hurts a lot, so she relied a lot on getting that Clash win. So I had to use Sun Shower Ego, which made her have to make up a really big sanity deficit. So she just exists. Sorry. This ID is really boring, so even in the context of Railway, there is not anything she does particularly well, nor is there much to talk about. In terms of replacements, no other Otis ID is close to as bad as Blade Lineage, so there was never any debate about bringing her or not. BL Otis was always going to be on the team. Zvironian now, despite that cool animation of Rhymeshank, as a small sub-rule, I actually didn't allow myself to use it beforehand. Not that I would have got any use out of it anyways. Remember, my envy supplies are minimal. And that is being generous. So I did not uptie Rhymeshank to 4, and I never used it once. In spite of that, Zvi Rodian was the top damage dealer on my team. 
but that's mostly because every buff I picked benefited her specifically. I took two Gloom Boosts, two Blunt Boosts, and a Poise Boost. The Poise Boost actually made Zvyrodian the best idea on my team, unironically. Unlike Sloshmill, who only gained tankiness by doing nothing, Zvyrodian always had a reliable 20 HP health pool to fall back on, despite having similar aggro problems. As well, she had a better clashing skill too, and once her poise count was high enough, which was around turn 3 most times, the skill 3 actually hit very hard and clashed well with the blunt and gloom boosts. However, Zvyrodian had a fatal flaw. Namely, her skill 1. This is also the case for Mariachi and Chef Gregor, who I will talk about soon, but a low rolling skill 1 is really bad, especially if you do not have an evade to replace it with. Now, Zvyrodian guard skill is good, but like I've said, taking hits leads to bad on hit effects, so not having a reliable clashing skill can mean you are just spamming Ego. Which Zvyrodian only had one choice. What is cast? Since her other Ego took precious envy resources. What is cast is a strong Ego and all, but it has a pretty low floor, meaning spamming it and lowering sanity could lead to being punished by losing a clash with it, ultimately leading to wasting resources and taking damage. Thankfully, the skill 3 was a good skill to use in most cases, and her skill 2 was also a good clasher. And my Sandy never got down too low with what is cast, and even then, she had enough speed to be able to gain sanity back. I briefly talked about this, but Rodin was probably the most contested spot on this team, since a lot of her IDs are underwhelming or straight up bad. Sly Rodin was really good, in the context of this run at least, with the poise buff, but she would have been practically dead weight without it. LCCB would have been too fast and would have paralyzed too well, alongside almost always having the conditions fulfilled since this team is majority blunt. And Rodian felt like too good of an ID to include, mostly due to the speed ranges once again. I cannot express how detrimental it was to have so many slow IDs on the team. Having even one more consistently fast ID would have made a world of difference. So base Rodian was really the only other consideration, and I think it does come down to the skill 1. Since that is the most common skill, especially in Railway, having a good or even not garbage skill 1 is extremely helpful. So Zvi Rodian, even though she ended up having more upsides than I predicted, was likely the worst choice I could have made, even if the Railway buffs did favor her. Chef Gregor is proof that damage stats don't mean everything. First of all, he is the fastest ID on my team, with a slightly above average speed range, meaning he was an ID I could actually kind of, rely on to redirect clashes. Going into Railway, I kind of assumed Chef Gregor would be the backbone of my team, and I wasn't exactly wrong. Leisure Domain alone made a lot of fights a lot more bearable. Another one of the bigger benefits Chef Gregor has was having redeemable health. Due to his passive, Chef Gregor was able to take hits and then heal it up after a few turns. This meant he was not reliant on Pursuance or Fluid Sack healing, unlike the rest of my team. In addition, the Paralyze and Bind on his skills came in handy multiple times, alongside his skill 2 clashing pretty well when he was 3 speed faster than the target, which was almost guaranteed with Snag Harpoon Bind in play. I never used AEDD nor Lantern. AEDD was not used for obvious reasons, and Lantern I don't have, and it would not have been any good anyways, since it was rare that Chef had so much missing HP that it was that much of a concern. Chef did have some real problems though and that was his clashing. Outside of his skill 2, his skill 1 rolls for an 8, and his skill 3 is a 9. This meant he was either going unopposed with the skill 1, praying for the enemy to hit tails on the skill 3, or leisure domaining. This meant he had good utility, but he could get stuck ego spamming for a while, but since leisure domain is so good, it was manageable. Chef Gregor was never going to be replaced. But Base Gregor could have been an alright second worst option, though Base Gregor's clashing is significantly more consistent. However, Chef has the Paralyze, so it about balances out in my opinion. Base Faust. Huh, uh, this ID is really bad. The worst ID in the game in my opinion. Her skill 2 is alright, but outside of that she is utter garbage. Her speed range meant her Paralyze on the skill 1 was far less usable than Gregor's, and the clash numbers on the skill 3 means that you need to go unopposed to get the attack power down off. Which admittedly it is good, but my god. The amount of times I would miss heads on that first coin and lose out on one attack power down, it was a real problem. 
Face Faust has some other issues. With other sinners, it was mostly easy to replace bad skills with ego or a defensive skill. For Faust, however, the only real option was to replace with Representation Emitter, which cost quite a lot of resources, especially with the thirsting debuff online. Including Gluttony, which I knew was at risk to get low during the run due to using a lot of Leisure Domain. Why couldn't I use her other ego? Well, they both cost Envy. One was Fluid Sack, which was okay to use sometimes, but if I wanted to save Fluid Sacks as much as possible, which I did, I had to be conservative. And Hexnail was literally unusable, since 6 or 7 Envy would cripple my supply. Going into the run, I had no idea just how boring this ID would be to use. The offense level and attack power down were nice benefits to have, but outside of that, Faust felt like a burden, even in the early cycles of the challenge. At best, I knew she would just be a debuffer with a decent skill too, and she somehow underdelivered on even those lowest of expectations. Even Blade Lineage Otis, who I criticized by saying she just existed, had a cool evade and a strong skill one. Lastly, Base Merceau. This was an interesting case. Like I already talked about, I mostly brought Base Merceau along due to needing a 7th Sinner, and Base he sang was too good. Along with every other base ID being too good. I mostly figured Merceau would be a pursuant spamming ID and nothing more. His numbers are honestly just alright, but the offense level truly is about as tragic as it gets. However, Base Mer's skill 2 was a decent enough clasher, despite that. The real problem here was absolutely his abhorrent speed range, combined with the need for pursuance. This was not something I was aware of before going into Railway, but like I have mentioned a few times, regaining sanity was not for free. Nowhere would this be more apparent than on Merceau. With low speed, meaning if Abnormalities did not target him, he would likely have to go unopposed. And the classic low numbers, and a single coin skill too, meaning if he missed one coin in the Clash, the Clash was all but a guaranteed loss. In addition, Base Merceau's guard was doing him no favors, being a bad skill all around. And Merceau's health could only be restored via Impending Day on Kill or Fluid Sack, since Pursuance can only heal other allies. The greatest asset for Base Merceau, though, was having the second best nuke skill on my team, in the form of his skill 3. Which is just an insane sentence, I know. But with the boosts I took, this skill was actually a pretty good damage dealer, and allowed to set up for Tremor Bursts, which would have been a lot better if it weren't for Slosh Mill. And it was only really good when he was at max sanity, since missing a coin meant far less damage. Base Merceau did his job pretty well, though. He provided Pursuance, and I really could not have expected anything more. I should also mention Chains of Others, which, while I did consider it a benefit of using a Merceau ID, it was also a precious Envy using Ego, and it would mean Merceau was useless the turn after I used it. But it did apply Bind and Attack Power Down, which was immensely helpful the few times I did use it. In terms of replacement, I actually should mention Rose Spanner Merceau, since some people seem to claim he is base Merceau but slightly worse, to which I say, what? Look at this speed range, and look at this one. Look at this offense level, and look at this offense level. Base Merceau is more of a tank, sure. However, Rose Salt has plenty of benefits. The one attack power down on skill 2 alone would have made him a godsend. Rose Salt would have been so much better to have for that speed range alone. Alright, that's all for every ID I actually used. There are five more IDs to talk about. Remember, I had to bring the worst support passives possible as well. Here were my choices. Spice Bush Ysang. This passive could have triggered, but never did, and even if it did trigger, it is far worse than any of the other Ysang support passives. It's funny to see people's reaction when they look at this team and see Spice Bush in the first slot, despite the fact that I never actually used him. And Corp Dawn, no fanatic, no passive activation. Seven Ryoshu. This could have triggered on Tupathos Mathos Rupture and Sloshmo Rupture, but never did to my knowledge, and even then would have barely made a difference. Liu Hong Lu, I had no burn, and Encliff, I inflicted no nails. A question you may be thinking about is, how much easier would this challenge have been if I actually made my support passives as good as possible? Here's what that would have looked like. For Yi Sang, I would have used LCB. He would have outright solved my sanity gain issue on Merceau. It would have been insanely useful. A different Dawn support passive would not have had much of an effect, 
I would probably try for W Dawns, but I hardly ever had three Gloom skills lined up. Chef Ryoshu is the obvious choice for the Ryoshu slot, a bit of nice trickle healing, even if it was only once per bite after killing a boss. Any healing to base Merceau without flu attack would have been a burden off my mind. Hong Lu is the most interesting slot by far to discuss. He would have been an interesting three-ish way tie between LCB, Ting Tang, and K Corp Hong Lu. LCB would have continued to mitigate the Sandy problem as mentioned before, Ting Tang would have been more damage, which is always nice, and K Corp would have required a bit of finesse to get the resonance, but healing my lowest HP center for the rest of the fight would have been worth it. And lastly, the Heathcliff slot, base Heath would have been best, but only marginally. You might be able to tell by how I describe some of these passives, but seriously, this run would have played out pretty differently if I was allowed to use base Yisang support passive, since sanity really was a problem. Add on K Korpong Lu passive, and I actually could use strategy. But I didn't bring good support passives. Why? Well, happiness was not a factor with this run. The goal was to win with the worst team possible, and the worst team possible I brought. So, now that all the factors are in place, let's look at the pros and cons to this team. The main upside is that this team has a lot of health, with a slightly smaller upside of being able to use Pursuance. Uh, the main downside is everything else. Lack of Envy. Lack of Speed. Lack of Good Clashing. Lack of Damage. Lack of Burst Options. Lack of Damage Type Variety. And so much more. But the specifics of that will have to wait. I think and hope that you might understand better now just how truly awful these IDs are for the Railway, despite their upsides. And we're only even talking about them on paper. At this point, since I have made it so clear how bad these IDs are, you might wonder. How did he manage to do Wayward Passenger? How did he manage to do Fey Lantern? How long did Steam Machine take? All of those questions will be answered in part two of this video. And I am sorry for having to do this to you all, but this video is long, and editing takes a long time, and I want this to come out really nice. So hey, subscribe if you want to see how this excruciating run that took 20 plus hours to complete came to be. And no, I am not joking. This was 20 plus hours. For now though, thank you for coming along in this exploration into this truly terrible team. And trust me, I have more to say about them in the second part of this video, but there are some details I want to save for some specific fight breakdowns for fun. So, thank you for watching. Part 1 of this video ends.